Most of the guys who end up fighting and killing each other, it's over a girl. Yeah. <laughs> what? Right. I think there's gonna be a swing back because the the just like the crazy left sh gotten like insane, and I think I think now we're finally starting to see it. It's just in the form of TikTok toxic masculinity. What do you think about the Jews? <laughs> uh, it's gonna happen. There's no way to avoid that. He's only saying because everyone else is saying it. That's why it's wrong. I don't have to listen to him, right? That's a weak mind. Well, because I already know what you're about to say. Like, you're just echoing the left, like, the government programming stuff. It's like, it's just predictable stuff that everybody here is, who's listening to the chat has heard a billion times. Well, I yeah, but do you side understand side. the problem? It's, it's... You tell about the best, like, what you're saying is predictable. Yeah, it's, it's predictable and you don't even have an answer to it. So what does that say about you? This is more about yeah, you than it does about me. Everything you said. Your answer is what? that it makes it hard for me to breathe because it makes yeah. it so oxygen and carbon dioxide can't pass through effectively, but it doesn't block larger molecules like bacteria and viruses you understand that makes no sense it's one or the other you can't do both okay, if it's so, so yeah, restricted that you can't breathe then it must block a lot of shit coming into your mouth and nose okay well that's my answer it's, it makes me uncomfortable and it makes me sweat weird and it fogs up my glasses and yeah it's just seat belts do and too I, do you I, I, do you wear a seat do you wear a seat belt when you drive or do you not give a fuck Actually, with it i have this thing where you could put a seat belt like thing you could buy on amazon this is like advice for the chat you can get like a seat belt thing on amazon that it clicks in and then it gets rid of the beeping sound Okay, so you don't wear seatbelts either. Do you think seatbelts make you safer when you drive? There's some circumstances where a seatbelt actually restricts you and traps you inside the car. You can see accidents. There are some circumstances like, where somebody could... A collision. Yeah. You get mad interrupting and I yeah. There are circumstances like, you can, you can, where... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Destiny, let him finish. Yeah, go ahead. You can go get into a, a collision, and if you have a seatbelt on, then some, you can get trapped in the car, and the car can catch on fire. But sometimes, if you're not wearing a seatbelt, there's instances where people have, like, literally like, flown out the, uh, the windshield because they weren't wearing a seatbelt and they survived, but a seatbelt could trap you in there. What do you think is more common? Do you understand statistics or probability? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's more common, but it's uncomfortable and it's just- Do you I, lock I, I your car? Do you lock your car I'm at fine. night? I do you think I'll be fine. I'm not asking if you're oh, fine. Oh, oh, I'm asking oh, oh. you to use your brain. Do you lock your car at night? Yeah. Why? You're not, gonna, you're not guaranteed to get robbed. In fact, probably most likely you won't. Yeah, but someone, it takes one second. It doesn't make me uncomfortable to lock my car. Wearing a seatbelt makes me uncomfortable. So if something is, uh, so you're here trying to preach to the masses how to be a successful man, how to be a masculine man, how to have integrity, how to be a, a, a good, upstanding person in the world. And you're telling me you won't wear a seatbelt because it makes you uncomfortable. That's your bar for, for axing a behavior. If I see a cop, then I'll put it on. But other than that, like if it, maybe if I'm going really fast, then I'll buckle up. But if I'm just like doing 20. Hold on, I'm not city, asking. Tell me, I don't need yeah. So you, so you put the seatbelt on for a cop. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. I think Sneeko was so triggered by being called toxic. Um, I should have fixated on that earlier, but it's because he probably associates the word toxic with feminism. Like that might literally be the only time he's ever heard the word toxic is from like hardcore SJWs or feminists. I should have railed on that a little bit. Like he's so obsessed with like SJW, anti SJW shit that he doesn't even know normal words anymore. <laughs> All right. You're a two strikes on YouTube or you're banned on Twitch, right? I'm not going to go on Twitch because I still want to do collabs with people. And if I, I will inevitably get banned. So <laughs> if I just avoid the platform that I can't get banned and I can still do collabs with people. On true. Twitch. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, Absolutely true. They're pretty restrictive with their community guidelines. Yeah. So uh, well, that's can you tell me about Cozy TV? Actually, it's funny. I met somebody today and they were telling me about Cozy TV specifically. Um, saying that I should get on this on this platform. It's, it's funny that this ended up happening today. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's pretty wild. Well, uh, Cozy TV, so if you don't know me, I'm a political activist. I'm a pretty controversial guy. Um, and I got banned on YouTube years ago. I got banned on Twitch years ago. I was on DLive. I don't know if you remember that, but that was PewDiePie's. Uh, he, he joined on that platform a couple of years ago. No, I, I streamed on there. Yeah, it's, it's a small platform. And I was on there for a long time. I got banned from there. I was banned from everywhere. So I came up with my own platform and, uh, you know, a lot of the alternative tech sucks. Like it doesn't work or it looks bad or it's like it's free speech branded or something like that. I just wanted to make something that looked good, good user experience, and it just let people say whatever they want. It's not a specifically political platform. Destiny has a channel on here. Um, if you know some of the other left wing streamers like uh, Jackson Hinkle has a, a channel on here. And I have a lot of kinds of people on here. So um, it's free to use, it's free to watch. Um, we have donation options coming with cryptocurrency and we have uh, user account signups with Telegram. So it's completely unbannable. And that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Sign me up, I wanna get on. 
Let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, um, dude. I think you're in touch on Instagram with one of my interns. His name is Arizona Action. He could send you all the details. And we so let's like, we can connect a couple of things in our mind real quick, right? So like, sign me up. I want to get on, right? Like, what are one of the reasons why he feels like signing up to Cozy is a good idea? He's actually too, he's unironically too scared to stream to Twitch because he's worried he'll get banned. And it might actually be the case that that's true. Restrictive moderation policies. Not very good. Not very good there, but... We could get you set up as soon as possible. So did you get, why did you get banned on YouTube? What did you do? Um, oh, well, I got banned for hate speech. I don't know what I said. I mean, I don't want to repeat anything that will get you banned right now. But, you know, they ban everything. It's like you can't say 9-11 was fake on YouTube. You can't say I said I, that happened theories. to me on stream. I said 11-9 I said might have been fraudulent, and they terminated my stream live. Yeah, I know, and it, it never used to be that bad, but it started to get bad in like 2018, 2019, and, uh, and I do a political show, so I have to talk about stuff like that. COVID, elections, all that. Like, you can't talk about anything anymore. It's, it's editorial, so that's why I got banned in uh, 2020 from YouTube. And I don't understand how that doesn't wake people up, the fact that, like, misinformation, can, like, why do, can they decide what information is good and bad? Why... Do we let these corporations decide what hate speech is? Oh, and that that's what I tell people, because it's like, I'm right wing, I have a lot of controversial opinions, but I'm like, at the end of the day, I don't think anybody benefits from having companies and billionaires decide like what's true and what isn't true. Cause that's what it is. They've appointed themselves like, well, we say what's fake and we say what's real and they get it wrong all the time. Like, every, like almost everything they say is wrong, but they're gonna ban people for misinformation all the time. It's just a thin Hold on. thinly veiled excuse for them to control all the information in the world. That's literally what it is. So I take it that you you didn't you didn't get uh, jabbed, obviously. Just confirmed. No, Walking yeah, a ten no. min mile is improbable at best. I'm six three and at a brisk pace managed thirteen twenty five. Maybe if I walked like a goon, I could get close to ten min. Also ran my first mile afterwards. Got seven forty six and barely didn't fall down my stairs and pass out. Nice. No, I didn't get jabbed. Did you? Um, yeah, I, um, oh, no. yeah, don't well, mind me, just no. another dono coming through. Well, I'm not sure, I don't want to get in trouble for misinformation again, but I think yeah, you okay. can take a guess. Yeah. But well, Destiny's uh, on here, Destiny's on Cozy TV, like he, we just had a debate, and finally I won, he won the first round, but that guy really trusts the government. Damn, he really thinks he came out looking good on the second round? No shot. Interesting. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, me and Destiny, uh, he's obviously very liberal. Like, dude, you can be liberal or something, but he believes everything the government says. I was telling him about all this corruption. I was telling him, like, good example of this is Nikki Haley. She was Trump's ambassador to the UN. She leaves the White House, and then she gets put on the board of Boeing, which Boeing is one of the biggest companies that sells planes and missiles to the military. And she gets this giant salary, and it's like it's so obvious that's just plain corruption. And he's like, oh, well, maybe they hired her because she knows a lot about airplanes. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, so he will just believe everything that the media says blindly, and the government says. Blindly, but yeah. you have a, a better career like that. And it should be obvious enough the fact that if you don't trust the government, then you have to go make your own platform, and you get banned. And the people who who echo the liberal agenda, stay and make all the money possible. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what sucks so much is, years ago, you could, the internet was like the wild west, and you could say anything, and people like Alex Jones would blow up all the time, and now they just pick who gets to blow up, and if you're not, if you don't agree with their politics about Trump or BLM or vaccines or even things that aren't even that political, then you're just done. No money, no career, no advertisers, and uh, yeah, so I think it's not even political. It's just like, are you with like the globalists? Are you with slavery incorporated? Or are you like a real human being? I'm a real human being. I say yeah. what I want. I don't give a shit about advertisers. I don't have advertisers. I make money with donations. That's the real fight. Yeah, me too. What do you think is actually going on? So I've been talking a lot about the spiritual warfare and I've, sure. I'm trying to wake people up to how they're trying to feminize men and masculinize women. And it's an intentional thing from the top. That's why everybody has their gender pronouns. They're making up new genders every single day. They're trying to weaken us and they're trying to make being a man and being funny and just not giving a fuck. They're trying to make that toxic and problematic. You probably heard all the same words, incel. They just label you with all this bullshit. And I've been talking a lot about my stream, how I have privilege not being a white man because you're here with the suit on and you're like, you look like a politician with your, your 
head, headset and the headphones and you get censored like they get a label you all right and a trump supporter way easier than me like i'm here like you know getting sturdy on stream i'm mixed as fuck so i get to I get I'm kind of privileged in a sense where it's it's harder oh to silence God. me. They can't call me a racist, all right? It's it's actually a privilege, and it, it sucks to see like guys like Alex Jones or like I was reacting to this other guy. Just all these right wing people, just immediately you get to silence and shut them up and just call them racist. Yeah, it's true. Like yeah, uh, you are privileged. You know, me and my friend used to talk about stop speeding. He would go on the stream, or Aiden Ross for that matter. They get to go on stream and they get to say. Uh, Aiden Ross would bring on all these rappers and they would say the most quote unquote homophobic things and get away with it because they're black. Being formed yeah. in front and of us it, save us to Prestony. Yeah, it's true. Like, uh, you know, me and my friend used to talk about stop speeding. He would go on the stream or Aiden Ross for that matter. They get to go on stream and they get to say, uh, Aiden Ross would bring on all these rappers and they would say the most quote unquote homophobic things and Wait, get away really? with it because they're black. Yeah. And if I had said those things, they banned me for being a, a homophobe, you know, racist right winger or whatever. Um, yeah, so it, there's obviously double standards. And the thing is, you're totally right about the spiritual battle. It's good versus evil. I'm a Christian, I, I believe in God. And it's a big thing about they're trying to steal the souls of people with pornography, yeah. with gambling. Yes. Look at Twitch. Yes. Like, like I'm on Cozy, and our platform on Cozy, it's it's people praying the rosary, it's it's gaming, it's political. Man, how can you talk about how can you talk about the bads of pornography while you're like living like a pornographic lifestyle? I don't understand. You always obsess about like sex and hoes and fuck everybody. I don't understand how you can you can't have it both ways. Pick one. Stuff people don't give a shit. You go on Twitch, and it's softcore porn and gambling. And this is just like stealing the virility and the souls of young people, getting yeah. them addicted to these like slot machine online gambling sites, getting them addicted to OnlyFans, getting them addicted to hot tub, jacuzzi streams, shit yeah. like that. Uh, it's so evil. I just and had an any- e-date with one of the hot tub streamers and she, I made it pretty far. I made it to the semifinals, but guess who she picked at the end? She picked the guy who bought her hot tub water. Um, uh, obviously, oh. you, you, see the, you see the move. She did that so that she, like oh, every guy in the chat's like, maybe I have a chance if I'm fat as fuck. Maybe I can, she'll hug me one day. And it's just sad because they really promote that and guys have a, a false idea about how women act. And I've been reacting to a lot of this channel. You should check out It's Complicated. It's a complicated channel on YouTube if you haven't seen it because it just breaks down how delusional all these American women are. All these American women worship celebrities. They worship Cardi B, Kim Kardashian, Meg Thee Stallion, and they're just, they're trained to turn into thoughts who don't have any unique personality. They don't think they have to improve. They think they're perfect. And people call me a misogynist because I bring it up, but I'm really trying to talk about the brainwashing. All these women worship celebrities and they don't really realize why. They're on Instagram and TikTok all day and it's fucking up their heads and they make no sense. And it's an intentional thing that they're doing to make men weaker because if women make no sense then who are we going to have kids with who are we going to be in relationships with most of the guys who end up fighting and killing each other it's over a girl yeah <laughs> you're right you're right they're messing with both the men and the women and the men follow the women because the women you know they're the ones that get to select for who's going to reproduce and who gets the sex and you're right the women are getting totally gassed up and and, and by the way all the women are fat now like <laughs> all the women are fat and they're all rude yeah. and they're all like they swear and they're just very They think being toxic and- is fun. They think their personality trait is just being a bitch. Yeah, they're all watching Euphoria and they all want to be like a fucking girl boss or whatever. <laughs> and uh, newsflash, no guy wants to date a fucking girl boss, okay? No, no guy, no guy cares about how much money a girl makes. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we're the ones that are supposed to make the money. Yeah. So that's why I like Andrew Tate. I just put out a big uh, thing on Telegram about Andrew Tate and like, Anytime you get a guy like that who's going to say what's true about women, they always blow up. Anytime somebody's out there who's charismatic and for whatever reason doesn't, doesn't get censored and says the truth about men and women, they blow up. And that's because people are so starved. All we for get truth. is the censored. Exactly. Yeah. People want the truth, but they just get the controlled feminist nonsense. And uh, they censor But we recognize it's real and that there's a takeover happening. And one thing I recommend you do is start telling your um, your chats to start clipping yourself and spamming it on TikTok. That's how I blew up a lot. Um, just getting clips. I, I'm on everybody's TikTok for you page. My face is everywhere. Guys, do that and to me, I, okay? I, I'm a, I, I support Tate too. Tristan Tate just hit me up a couple days ago. Real recognize is real. So people like this, we need to start linking up with each other. And like, I'm glad that you have this platform like here. Because when they inevitably ban me, I'm going to start streaming on this platform. Chat, you got to go over to Cozy TV when I do get banned. But it's going to become stronger than the censorship. 
and th- there's really a movement happening because it's like the amount of men who are getting weaker and weaker. It's sad. Whether like, it's a sneaker or to only Matthew Fuentes, these kids are just super zoomers. How much real experience does Nico or Nick have? As a fellow zoomer, I feel like I have the same limitations on perspective that they do. Uh, listen to older people. <laughs> That's all I can say. These guys are addicted to pride. I don't know. And it's a hard we one. still push this idea that feminism, like that women are oppressed and they're not at all in the West. When they talk about the wage gap, they talk about catcalling and that's it. But the homicide rate is completely all towards, like men are deleting themselves at, an, uh, I think, nine out of 10 times compared to women. Oh, we go to jail more. We die sooner. We don't have any rights when it comes to marriage. We lose all our money. Like we have to work harder and harder. It's becoming harder to become a man. And when you try to, they just they, they immediately try to cancel you. How many times have they tried to cancel you on Twitter? They every single day they make up false allegations and everything. And I predicted this coming. So my whole career on YouTube, I've been on YouTube uh, for so many years. I've always thought about everything like being clipped up i've always known that they were going to try to emasculate me to belittle me to cancel me for something but they ain't got shit they ain't got shit on me yeah you're right it is real recognize real and it's us against the world and now that's the important thing because they thrive on lies their entire got empire it. is built on Talk lies to older lie- people. time to hit up mr tate wait where the fuck are these donuts coming from oh i think they're my site okay the people they lie about real people they lie about real human beings and you're right there is a movement of people coming together and saying we know what's up we know what's good for us we know that porn is bad we know that we need to work out we know that we need god we know that we seems like a lot of people are caught up in the anti-sjw days yeah i think it's a pushback to the because i think i said this i think we're finally getting there we've said this for a while that it's going to happen but now we're finally getting there we said like i think there's going to be a swing back i think there's going to be a swing back because the they just like the crazy left shit has gotten like insane. And I think I think now we're finally starting to see it. It's just in the form of TikTok toxic masculinity. Um, the obsession with like the Andrew Tate of the world or I feel bad blaming Sneeko because he's a young guy, but we need these things. And people are beginning to shut out the mainstream media. People are getting really skeptical of the powers that be. So I agree. Yeah, the time is now to link up. How do you measure that a swing back is happening? Um, I feel a general unease with, um, it feels like now, mo- it feels like you've got a lot of old, I say old school. When I say old school liberal, I mean liberal from like 2010. <laughs> Uh, but like you're seeing a lot of these guys starting to speak out more on Twitter and journalists and shit. I thought it was really one of the biggest indicators to me that I thought was really surprising. I could be totally wrong, but I thought it was really surprising that Washington Post actually fired Somnez. I didn't think that was going to happen. I can't believe it. They completely shit can um, I, I, I didn't. I thought that they would have just been quiet about it or given her a fucking award or some shit. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that was pretty surprising. To me. So I'm, I'm starting to wonder if like this is we're getting the kickback, the swing back is happening. Support the stuff that we know is is good for our souls, good for our bodies, and uh, and reject the uh, the cancel culture bullshit. And, and you're right, they canceled you, they canceled me. You know, people people try to cancel me all the time. They say make up things about me, take the shit that I say out of context. Who was that? Um, some Washington Post journalist. He retweeted a stupid joke. It was like, every girl is bi. You have to figure out if she's bipolar or bisexual or something. Um, and she. That Sam Nez girl, um, she like retweeted him and started talking about how it was an unsafe environment to work. She was trying to get him fired, and he, she was trying to get his Need life more destroyed. Need YouTube stream BTW Obamana less than three. Um, she was trying to get his life destroyed, and she's been involved in something we found out afterwards is she's also been involved in it was probably a fake rape accusation as well against another journalist guy whose life was destroyed by her and one other person. Um, it was like they got Wait, drunk. Wait, is considering himself mescaline. Lol. Nice. Uh, they two people got drunk. They fucked, and afterwards she came out and she dogpiled him with another girl for like rape ac- accusation bullshit. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, rip. Gets me in trouble in court. Gets it's me in Sanmez, trouble. not Sumnez. Oh, I thought it was Sumnez. It's Sanmez. In trouble with the law sometimes. He has to go to court. Um, yeah, I, I'm in, I like. I can't really talk about it, but I'm in this civil thing right now. And uh, and let's just say I say a lot of controversial stuff on my show because I'm a guy, and you know when you're with the when you're with the bros, you just say whatever, and you yeah. say controversial stuff, and you say stuff that you know might come across as insensitive, but it sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's true, and that's what you're going for. 
and they use everything against me to just make me look bad and, and you know, damage my life. But people need to, to start to rise up because soon nobody's going to have the right to say anything. If you don't stand up for the people that say the things that they're going to cancel for now, in the future, nobody's going to have a right to say anything at all. We're all just going to you know, be robots controlled by advertisers and uh, Twitter and YouTube and the ADL. So... Um, so yeah, the time is now to start rising up. So you really think, I, I agree. I do think it's good versus evil. I, I just came back from Puerto Rico. I, was, I linked up with all these like crypto uh, millionaires who made it out of the matrix and they they, they pretty much just um, validated everything I believed about what's going on. I always of course, say, I tell you'll never get it right. That- the elites are all like touching kids on an island. They do satanic rituals. Like the, we, it was exposed with Epstein. And I don't know why more people didn't wake up to that. Like the monkey shit that's going on. We're gonna have another lockdown. They're gonna try to quarantine us again. They're gonna keep us all inside. They're gonna tell us to stay six feet away, cover your face, jab up. And it's stupid. They're taking away just the basic things that humans need to be human. You, this, you have to. It's really just good versus evil. And a lot of people call me a crazy conspiracy theorist, but it's right in front of your face. How did Epstein not wake people up? How did COVID, how did that not wake more people up? It really confuses me. Well, they turned it into a joke. They turned it into a punchline where they're like, Epstein didn't kill himself. And it's like, he didn't kill himself. He was murdered. And he was murdered by the people that were compromised by the fact that he had him on a plane raping kids so (laughs) that he could control them. And if you look into the situation, it gets even darker. His, his girlfriend, uh, Jelaine Maxwell, her father was a Mossad agent. That's Israeli intelligence. Wait, Stephen, you have a better so, organized community than most. We could unironically spam you on TikTok and blew up. Give us the purpose like you do in our slash place. Inshallah, brother. Okay. You know, if you really start to peel back the layers there, there was a lot of messed up stuff. He had people from finance, British royal family, members of the government, uh, people, Hollywood celebrities, and he had them all compromised because he had pictures and videos of them doing very illegal, messed up things. And we have a government that's basically run on blackmail. Does mass actually stop monkey paws? What is mass? Like ch- like going to mass? Like church? Hey, Destiny, I am worried about you. You are falling into the matrix. You need to make it out of the matrix and wake up. Please sign up for my Hustlers University affiliate link so you can escape. Okay. Nobody looked into that because it turned into some Reddit slogan where they said, oh, Epstein didn't kill himself. He did it. He was killed. And, you know, so that they just glossed right over that. And that's what they do with all these things. Um, but And that's why they target. Alex Jones just got blasted in this court hearing the other day, this defamation case. They're trying to indict Trump. Oh, we need to They're watch that. They're with Fuck. lawfare and censorship. Everybody that tells the truth because the truth is getting out there. The Internet is creating like an Arab Spring in America. It's wait, yeah. There's a consciousness rising and a reawakening that's happening, and they're doing everything they can to stop it, but they can't. The technology's too hot. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why. What do you think about the Jews? <laughs> uh, well, I think it's totally legit. I mean, I've gotten canceled for saying this. Well, but, I, I don't um, know what you mean by totally legit. Like, I've been getting deeper into the conspiracy things, and people have been oh, coming no. up to me about that, and like, it, it is true. Nick is like, <laughs> <Please be laughs> Nick is like, ho, 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 ho. Nick, that's like that woman that walked through the street. She's like, do you want to have a debate? Imagine somebody going to Nick like, tell me about the Jews. He's like, let me tell you about the Jews. Let me tell you about the Jews. Well, like about the what can't like, I, I tell you about the Jews? To, to come on my ass. But I obviously, pause. I didn't mean to say that. I don't want them to, to try to cancel me. But do they control all the money in the world. Are they behind the scenes on most of these issues? Well, you know, I, I'm a guy that I talk about that a lot on my show, and that's a big part of why I've been like canceled. And and here's the thing, you know, you got to be careful about it because you could definitely go too far. Destiny and say, is the Night's Watch, and the some- anti SJW are the White Walkers. Soon the three horns will blow. Saddle up, boys! Good content days are coming. Wow. Things that aren't true. Jews are very organized. That's what you have to understand on some level is that you have things like the Republican Jewish Congress. You have the the World Jewish Congress. You've got Jewish federations all across the country. They're very how do you organized reconcile politically. The Epstein, They're organized on con- how do you reconcile the Epstein thing? Like, it's conspiracy, but everything about it seems so strange. Um, the How do you reconcile it? So there is a couple weird things. I'd have to go and dig through it more. I tried to dig through it a little bit, but I didn't find anything compelling. One, him killing himself is believable, right? That's not unbelievable. The guy was, his life was fucked, billionaire, disgraced. Like, so his desire to kill himself is believable. So then the question becomes like, why did he have the opportunity to do it? Because it should have been obvious to anybody around him that like, this guy's probably gonna commit suicide, like Jesus Christ. Um, I don't remember if there was a fuck up in the guard change or something happened. I would have to look through it. But like, um, 
when I dug through it at the time, it wasn't, when I looked through it, it wasn't an unbelievable story. I wasn't like, oh my God, he was absolutely murdered or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd have to go through and dig through it again. But I mean, it's a fun conspiracy. Like the guy is rich. Maybe people killed him to cover up shit or whatever. Um, but it's always, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like, It's always strange to me when like, there's so much involved in the, arresting somebody, you know, charging somebody, arraignment, all that. There's so much involved in all of that that if there was some higher power that was capable of just, like, getting him killed in prison, like, why would you ever let it get to that point? That's, like, that's all... This is always my problem with most conspiracy theories is that, like, you a lot like, so much power on one end, but, like, wouldn't that have been exercised earlier, right? Like, if I, if I was the person who was, like, planning the Epstein op, I feel like I would have gotten fired because I would have said, why the fuck did you let Epstein even get caught and then charged... Right, he would have gotten killed earlier. Is what I would imagine. You know, that that's that's what I would be thinking. But I don't know. It's it's obviously it's a really attractive conspiracy. The idea that there was a plan to murder him in jail or something. But Destiny is always so predictable in his takes. His takes are always counter counter narrative. So I just laid out why exactly I believe the things that I do believe, and I think it's pretty logically consistent. And your only response is to go, uh, contrarian. Uh, uh, uh. Like, one of us is acting like a f***ing retard. You can figure that out, Chief. College campuses where they have their own Jewish uh, campus life. They're organized in uh, Republican and Democrat. What would you place the percent chance the conspiracy is true at? My priors make it very low. And then all the other analysis afterwards would also make it very low. Because, like I said, anybody that would be powerful enough to have him murdered in a maximum security prison and then not get caught probably just had him killed before before even charges happen or before anything like he would have just been killed along the process somewhere along the way that would have been my i mean doesn't the same type of stuff happen to cartels in mexico like cartel bosses still get caught but they own a large part of the government no i don't think it plays out the same way in cartels in mexico <clears throat> but i would have to uh, i'd have to go dig up i mean we can look through the facts of the case again like because here is the um I'm sorry, I know I'm going against your, like, your favorite like lay Reddit narrative here. Um, th there was never any evidence whatsoever that anybody was involved in anything ever relating to any of this, right? It just seemed kind of fishy. Like that's the most you have, but. It's like this, literally all of Epstein's associates had the power to have him snuffed. You're totally right. Why are there so many why wouldn't they have just had him? Why wouldn't they have just had him snuffed earlier? <laughs> like, why, why let it get this far? They're still conducting investigations. Only 16% of Americans are saying that they believe Epstein committed suicide. 45% said he was murdered, 39% unsure. It was the perfect crime, true. The Epstein what? shit. Um, like the whole like what, what is the conspiracy behind it exactly? well cause, so everybody thinks that basically some ultra shadowy people got him killed which I guess is possible I, like I'll yeah, say I'm it's possible sure. but there's zero evidence for it you have no reason to believe it and it's totally believable that he would have killed himself right so like I absent think it's, yeah it's believable yeah, absolutely, the only thing yeah. what is <clears throat> what is the truth as far as like cameras being turned off when he killed himself do you know what that the apparently they that? malfunctioned curious Cur very curious true but my so the I, whole, wonder, I wonder the, um, i wonder if that's like they malfunctioned because the guards were like fucking jerking off watching tv or they malfunctioned because fucking james bond came in there and fucking you know yeah true maybe. killed epstein like i think it's more likely the guards were like jerking off well, so like, like oh, that, the question there's always like questions of like what is common practice like are these cameras fucking up all the time are these whatever like it's always um you know, or like somebody just being lazy, um, like, you know, somebody like, oh, fuck it, I don't care. It's it's hard to know. The The only thing is, is that when I think of like conspiracies, what I usually think of is like, if somebody had the power to do this action, is it making sense that this is the point that they'd intervene? Because I feel like it would have been way better to kill Epstein as soon as he was caught or, or sometime along that process rather than waiting for him to get thrown in like maximum security prison. Like, that just seems insane to me, but. Yeah, I suppose. Um... But I mean, like, I'll admit there's a chance that here's, here's the thing. I'm willing to admit that there's a chance that somebody killed him. It's possible. But none of you guys, so like true mom and chat, you you won't admit that you have zero evidence. You have no evidence whatsoever. You don't um, like no nobody will admit that. But <laughs> it's I don't care. You know what is a little bit fucked, though? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's let's assume that there is like a black book that Epstein had of mm -hmm. like. Where you know, he writes down the names of all the powerful like pedophiles yeah, in the like, world. Yeah. 
like like let's assume that he had the blackmail book and right now that was in the hands of i guess the justice department would mm-hmm. have that information right now mm-hmm. i wouldn't put it past um democrats or republicans at the time to use that as a bargaining chip um to you know to like not do something or to do something essentially along those lines i don't i don't think that i would put that past them i think that's probably within their scope like they would be thinking of the greater good and all that type of thing like okay we're not going to charge this guy but you know we're going to get the senator from kentucky to be able to vote with us on this issue like i think that's reasonable to assume that might happen wait that what might happen that they would use non-prosecution on some of these things to further um votes or further their political agendas Wait, how would you? I'm sorry. Hold on. I am just kidding. They have the book in the DOJ or whatever, and you're and, and Democrats and Republicans. You, how would they use this to further political agenda? By essentially prosecuting selective prosecution, I guess. Am I? I'm just. Am I fucking retarded, or am I missing something? I think you are selectively retarded. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I don't on. understand how you're not. They have the this. book. Yes. And selective prosecution. Are you talking about like blackmailing people or something, or? No, it's like, well, you know, we have this list of names. <clears throat> we could certainly make it public that this guy fucked a 14-year-old. Or, you know, it would be convenient if, uh, you know, the senators from Missouri voted with us on this crime bill coming up here. You think that's Oh, never happen? mind. Okay, I'm understanding. I'm sorry. I'm so confused. Okay. So you're saying the implication being that there's some senators or congressmen that are on that book and you're like, hey, you should vote with us. Otherwise, they're going to release it or something, right? To a certain extent, I think there's some of that that's going on. Right now, there's this book, and I think they're in a pickle, because I'm sure there's a lot of people in there that are Democrats, and and a lot of people... Hold on. I think there's a lot of people in there that might be Democrats and might be Republicans, and I feel that they can't selectively use one or the other, because it's all circumstantial. I don't think there's any... Wait, but is this book real, or are we saying hypothetically? If the book is real. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Okay. I don't don't think that would happen, because you'd be roping in so many people, the shit would get leaked, I think. Or because people would have to figure out, like, why the fuck is this Democrat voting on this Republican bill, or why is this Republican voting? Like, I think it would be, like, really... I don't... Don't you feel like it would be pretty irresponsible of Epstein to go through all this trouble of running this underage sex ring, and you don't even get any, like, poggers blackmail material out of it? Wasn't the guy already, like, a fucking billionaire? What else does he need? (laughs) Well, how do you think he got to being a billionaire? Is some of this part of it? Like, basically, not like he got money from people to f- kids, but essentially those people may have f- kids. And as a uh, part of that, I don't think he was able to get preferential treatment and deals and make money that way. Uh, th- I mean, that sounds really exciting, but I, I don't know. What was he a billionaire for? Well, exactly. I don't know. I guess he was like, a, he did like, you know, probably typical hedge fund shit, but that doesn't mean anything. You, you don't become a billionaire just because you're a hedge fund. You have to have people that invest their money with you. And it's a lot easier to get fucking Joe Blow to give you a billion dollars to invest if you let him a 14 year old something the night before, as opposed to if you didn't would be the thought there. So possibly, yeah, but like trading favors, I guess. It would be that would be like a super elaborate. (laughs) There'd be a lot of stuff set up in that if that was the case. I mean, it's just like. um, I don't know, I, I think it's literally just um like when you're talking about like what you're talking about i could totally believe for like a few people but like spanning hundreds of people like in one dude's death note i don't know that just seems like so fantastic how many how many people do you think were fucking underage people on epstein island if you had to guess without having without having actually researched it or done anything like that nothing yep my my guess is it would just totally reaching my gut it would have to be well under 50 people that'd be my guess sure that's still a lot of people that are it could be but up. like i'd be surprised i'd like i'd probably I'd be well under 50 but it wouldn't be like hundreds of powerful people or whatever maybe like man i don't know 10 or 20 i, feel like, I don't know i don't know how big I, I feel like or whatever. my hunch is that it's actually not that many people because like because when you start roping in every new person you're getting like insanely complicated like shit that could go wrong right i feel like if you're gonna do illegal shit like omega illegal shit like fucking underage people you're probably not going to want to involve third parties with that. Yeah. Right. You're okay. Probably hold gonna... on. You're, everything you're saying is disproving everything you're trying to say. Your open relationship is elaborate. And you have a hard time believing rich pedos life isn't elaborate. What my open relationship with one other woman involved will spawn drama that will like span like seven different platforms. There's no way I could rope 50 people into it that are all billionaires or highly influential without anybody finding out. Yeah. I, I think it was mostly Epstein liked king kids 
And I yeah, think I mean, that, that seems 90- undeniable, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. that was like 95% of this. And like maybe the 5% is occasionally he would be like, hey, you want to go f- a kid to like his friend or something? And sometimes they would. But I find it extremely uh, unlikely that like these billionaires are like, oh, let me just go give you some blackmail material on me. Let's just go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this idea that there's like hundreds of like, you know, Prince Charles and Bill Clinton and everybody is like, um, like all of these people are going to fuck children with Epstein. It just seems, it just seems like, like you're so gonna risky. Kids. If you're going to a kid, you're going to do it in the privacy of your own home. Okay. It's going to be a kid that you find. You're not going to go get somebody else's kids, Christ. you know? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I assume that would be the more prudent of a system to do this but yeah i don't know it seems unlikely um it is shocking though that i don't think there's any been any um coordinated arrests around epstein yet why is that the case especially like have we not well aren't they investigating like the maxwell stuff I don't know. But Are I mean, they? like, there's What's two the answers. The one answer is that, like, yeah, he had a book of, like, people that he traveled with and did stuff with, but they, that wasn't, that wasn't, like, a book of kitty fuckers. So they probably tried to investigate. They ran into a bunch of dead ends, and then nothing came up. But what everyone in chat would probably think is that, like, well, the reason why none of the investigations are happening is because they're all rich and powerful people, and they'll murder the prosecutors, and they basically told them, you're not allowed to investigate anything because all of every billionaire and politician is a child rapist, so you can't look into it is probably the, is the, the chat idea. Yeah, maybe. I saw you uh, in this debate last night against, um, I don't know, scuffed Andrew Tate, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. You did very well. Thanks, I try. You know what they uh, say, I'm trying to... Like watching Nebraska Destiny one more time. (laughs) Yep, trying to be more spiritual, Dan, you know, just... You need to go more visceral and, like, appear... Or sorry, appeal to the Zoomers that will watch that person. What does that mean? I don't know. You need to make those Zoomers that are watching this guy to like find out how to be a man. You need to you need to talk to them. So at the end of the debate, they're like, man, fuck scuffed Andrew Tate. I want to watch Destiny now. He's right. Well, I still have to be careful because I'm trying not to come off as like overly aggressive, right? Why? That's why we love you. We want you to destroy. Yeah, but I think people. I have like, for, if I would have been overly aggressive in debate number one, I wouldn't have gotten debate number two, right? And I think coming off as somewhat friendly. Like I was pretty aggressive last night, but I still try to like toe the line. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to, or, yeah. I think I reach people better when they view me as more approachable and not like as standoffish. Hmm. 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 Oh my God, did you see that jobs report that came out? <laughs> no. Oh, well, are we doing good or bad? It was like, I think that, I think they estimated that we would gain 35,000 jobs and we ended up gaining mm-hmm. like 540,000 jobs. Unemployment is down to 3.5% and wage growth was like huge year over year. It was like unbelievably huge. Um, um, I said this before and people keep getting triggered because they want to talk about like gas prices. It's the only thing people are fixated on, but we're still like in an area where it's really hard to figure out, like, it, are we actually in a recession or what the fuck is happening? Cause like nobody seems to understand right now. Like inflation is definitely growing, but like wages are growing massively too. For some people, unemployment is unbelievably low. Um, hopefully the interest rates start to cool off the housing market a bit and other parts of the economy cool down. But, um, yeah, it's like insane. I'm going hard on real estate right now. I love it. Yeah. Feels great. Chad, if you have free money out there, that's bad. If you just have fucking cash sitting in your bank account doing nothing, you need to spend that money. Now, everyone's going to tell you to be cautious about going into real estate right now. They're going to say, hey, wait a year. But you know what? As with everything, it's built in. Hold on. Now is the time All to right. buy. True. Okay. You guys, <laughs> I'm trying not to ban people. How is worker participation rate, Destiny? So, Puggy Gups, you're talking about something called the labor force participation rate, which I think is similar to the U6 unemployment number. Labor force participation includes every single worker, I think over the age of 17 in the United States, or non-worker. That's labor force participation rate. As baby boomers get old and retire, your labor force participation rate is always going to fall. 
It's going to happen. There's no way to avoid that. As the baby boomers finally age in retirement and finally stop working, your labor force is going to fall. That's it's unavoidable. The screeching about that number, that hyperfixation on that one fucking number, if you, want, if you want to have an intelligent conversation, we could talk about the difference between the U3 and the U6 unemployment, but just screeching over and over again, because I know you heard one conservative bring up, labor force participation is down. Labor force participation. It's not like there's a whole bunch of fucking people around that can't find work. Like, go get the fuck out of your house and go walk down to a Burger King that has a now hiring for $22 an hour sign and walk anywhere in any city anywhere in the United States I know this just for the last like two months I've been traveling every single city I've been at big small anywhere there's now hiring now hiring now hiring signs in every store I've been to tons of places I've seen in other cities I saw it in Tennessee I saw it in California I've seen it in Florida places that are traditionally 24 7 are now closed at night because they don't have the workers for it like are you a fucking more like what like you can get you can find a job if you want a job there are not there are not all these discouraged workers in the economy right now that can't find work you just haven't gone outside of your house I or if somebody can tell me, if somebody can tell me somewhere, if if that's not the case in your town, then you can you can tell me. Actually, no, Desi, in my town, it's really, really hard to find work. I don't think that's the case right now, though. I think anybody in the United States that wants a job can find one, and it's, they're starting to pay more and more and more at the um, at the bottom end of things. The U6 is the lowest it's been in history. Is that actually true? By the way, this video you have on screen, this guy looks like he just busted a nut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, the U6 is, oh f I don't. I didn't even know that. I should have known that, I could have just said that. The U6 unemployment, which includes discouraged workers, this is, the U6 is the one that everybody likes to point out when the U3 is getting too good for a president they don't like, they'll point to the U6. Even the U6 unemployment rate is the lowest it's been in history. Almost, 6.7? Actually it might be. Actually it might be the lowest point in recorded history. So yeah, get the fuck out of here with labor, labor fourth participation. Out of here, bitch. <clears throat> Employment to population ratio. Oh, this is for the 25 to 54 year old age group. Gotcha. Is pretty fucking high. It's a point higher in the year 2000. Destiny explained gas. Uh, gas prices have been up. They've been falling. I think they've fallen like almost every day for the past 30 days. But I don't think gas prices alone are eliminating um, all the gains in wages right now. Like if you, if you want to stream on Cozy, it's gonna be like joining a gang, and they're gonna be like, "Go find." Uh, do you know any people that follow and in, fall into this uh, particular denomination? Uh, it's gonna be a short list for you, Steve. Well, yeah. Oh, 50 days in a row. What are what is what are national gas prices at now? Uh, no, no, the, like a gallon of gas. What's like the average? Like what is it now? What was it like? I read an article that the, for the first time there's like some 7-Eleven in Missouri or some shit that was at 2.99. Jesus. Damn, I remember on, I think it was it in Miami Beach, it was over $6 a gallon. <laughs> well, that's that's not fair. First off, because that was a full service station. Uh -huh. And they can just, they just, butt, if you're talking about, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I remember gas being under a dollar. Do you remember that as well? Or were you not driving then? I don't think I was old enough for that. So it was only probably a year or two before that. But I remember getting under a dollar gas. But I guess... That's not like a dollar today, obviously not. Yeah, That's yeah. probably like, but still, you know. You know what's gonna be interesting? Hmm. This has to happen. They're gonna have to make a $500 bill or a $1,000 bill coming up. Like, it doesn't make sense that they're still not. Why? That that's because the $100 bill isn't like $100. So how long have we had the $100 bill? I don't know, but I feel like we've moved cashless in so many different areas. I don't know if there's like a huge incentive to keep working on like new bills. Um, I feel like there is, okay. is my, is my assumption is like, there's still going to be a cash economy, but yeah, like who's mostly... buying things with like hundred dollar bills or what would you use a $500 bill for? Well, in the future, you can like buy gas with a hundred dollar bill. No, like filling up your car is a hundred dollars or a nice dinner. Not even a nice dinner coming up here will be a hundred dollars. Like this is not like unreasonable. Like when we were younger, a hundred dollars, that was like serious fucking shit. Now, not so much. Hey, Majestic Gopher, you fucking moron. How about you come in here and tell us what it is? I want to know your fucking credentials. Majestic Gopher, come in here with your fucking PhDs. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's, let's have you explain it to us. Okay, I want to know about fucking what basement life is about and what flavor and fucking chicken tendies you enjoy. Damn, okay? damn, dude, you just got toasted. 
Toasted. Oh, you're working at your real job? Sorry, do they not do chicken tendies at fucking Taco Bell? My bad. Damn. Toasted. Double toasted. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Double toasted. Nice That's job, right. Daniel. You fucked that dude. Yeah, I hate that guy. God, Dan, you're so base today, man. You fucked that guy. I hope he kills himself. God. Yeah. Me too. You know, actually, this is a weird thing. Why can we not... Actually, I don't want to go this far. No, go. Again, go ahead. Why can't we fuck whatever dog we want? No. No, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say, we have to normalize telling people you hate to say, I... I Like, if I, if you hate someone, like, if you hate uh, J.K. Rowling or whoever this is, normalize telling them to, like, jump off a cliff. Like, literally to, like, I don't... What, what is all this? Like, oh, please. True. Don't. Go back to yeah. telling people to kill themselves. Dan based. Dan is extra base today, guys. If you don't like this person, why are we being so sensitive to them? I guess, uh, well, I already know the reason. I just, I hate that I know the reason. I like it more when I don't know the reason, you know? What is the reason, Dan? Well, it's because, you know, we don't really do this about the person. We do it because the, what it could say to a third person when you're encouraging them to kill themselves. If you're suicidal, maybe you want to do it. Like that's, you know, I just, I don't like that I know the answer to these fucking questions. That's why you don't call someone, you know, you don't be ableist, you're not fat. That's why you don't make fun of Elon Musk looking bad because then someone who looks like Elon Musk is like, oh, I look like that. I guess Dan fucking hates me. Cringe, true, God, true. That is cringe. Epic Dan rant right there. It was simpler back when I was in school. Yeah, we celebrated we were... suicide of the week back then. <laughs> we were bullies and we liked it. Dan, it's because what if they actually do it? Well, you hate that person. If you hate them, wouldn't you be happy if that happened? Like if you hate JK Rowling, wouldn't you be thrilled with that result? Or are you gonna be like, oh no? <clears throat> what do you think about Web3? <laughs> I think it's stupid. Do you think the future of the internet's gonna be like backboned by crypto and shit? No. Why? Why would it ever be like that? I don't know. Yeah, I hate fucking cryptocurrency in general. I hate it all so fucking much. You know why I hate it the most? Because all the wrong people have the money. Oh, got rich. Yeah. And they're like, the worst is like these dipshits that got lucky on some fucking shit coin or whatever. And now they're out here giving like financial advice. Like they're ready. Yeah, to I don't like want to go to your yeah. fucking TED talk because you bought fucking Shiba coin six months before it blew up. Okay, you're not a fucking thought. Yeah, man. I know. Yeah, fuck. Hold on, I'm sorry, we have to watch a thing now, guys. <laughs> Party, they're organized for all kinds of things, and they use their these organizations, and the thing is, Jews earn a lot of money, they're very educated, they use their connectedness to each other and their organizations to exert influence. And so, you know, they're not the only ones that influence society, there's lots of institutions and groups that influence society, but they're one of them. And so you look at the Biden administration and his cabinet is full of Jewish people. You look at big tech and legacy media and the people that run them, full of Jewish people, Hollywood, full of Jewish people. They control and the you media, can't they talk control about the money. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in, in GTA, Jews control the, the media and the, and the money and, and Grand Theft Auto, right. my favorite video game. Villagers, oh. they're the villagers <laughs> of Minecraft. <laughs> and what did you say, what did you mean about Haitian IQ? Uh-oh. Oh, well, you know, then you got average IQ. That's another one of these so-called red pills is that, you know, different groups have different IQs. So on average, Chinese people have the highest IQ. White people have a high IQ. Hispanics, hey, blacks. You're saying Haitians have, have the lowest, the lowest, like, Hispanics and blacks have the lowest IQs? Uh, uh, yeah, blacks are the lowest on average and Hispanics. Wow. Blacks. On average, on average. Wow. That's true, though. I mean, if you have, send, send me a study about that. Send me a study about that. I want to see that. I will. And there's the thing. I'm, I'm Mexican. The funniest thing was somebody pointed out in um, Sneeko's subreddit. Apparently one of his fans posted like four days ago. They were like, if somebody tells him about the Jewish question, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm not saying that as like. Well, why didn't you do that? I mean, I'm, I have a. What, give him the Jewish conspiracy theory? Yeah. Because Why not I, accelerate the downfall of someone that's doing a net negative to the world? Because he can be my friend, okay? I can save him. Would you Would you be friends with Hitler? If I could... Yeah, he just needed a good mom. <laughs> you didn't see the He's video? Just... Uh, here's a, a thought for you. Yeah? 
do you think that if John Stewart ran for president, he would win? No, absolutely. Really? Not. You yeah. act you that he's so good on his feet, so fast though. He knows what's going on. Wait, you really don't think so? Well, let me caveat. He maybe could win, but it's not off of his current popularity. If he started campaigning and he was like really, I, I don't know, I don't want to say presidential, but was like really good with the speech and everything, then maybe, yeah, he could steamball it or something, but not at, not right now, no. I feel like if he was the Democratic candidate, he would fucking dominate. Maybe. I mean, he's a smart dude. It would be interesting to see him in like debates and stuff for sure. Um, but, yeah. Why do you think he could? I'm guessing you think you would have some. No, I really, I, I, I do. I feel, well, this, it's my whole. Th Let's assume, for the sake of argument, that you would say, oh yeah, for sure, if he ran, he would fucking clean up. There's no doubt. He's universally liked. You know, Boy, he's he would not, crush. But... Let's just assume that that okay, was sure. the case. Okay. Um, I feel like if that was the case, and I, this is the big disagreement here. I feel like it's almost um, he has no room to talk on anything if he doesn't run. Like, if you want to bitch about veterans or anything else, but you're not going to run for president, well, fuck you. You know, you, you have a chance to do it and you choose not to. Um, well, I mean, come on. Like, listen, you don't want to you think you care about this issue, but you won't even run for president. I don't know if that's a fair <laughs> criticism. Is it? Why not? Well, because I don't think you should, the requirement to care or the threshold for caring about politics to show that you care is running for president. That seems a little. So you you care so much that you're not willing to inconvenience yourself for a few years. That's a mighty big inconvenience. Sure, it is. That's like saying you like but, you claim you like the homeless, but you don't even donate all your money to them. Like, well, it's it's certainly to that to an extent, yeah. Do you think that's a fair burden to place on most people? Well, it just puts into perspective how much they care. I guess to a certain extent, yeah. I care, but, you know, not enough to, like, give up a few years of my life to change this issue. Like, I care about veterans, but I'm not going to inconvenience myself for a few years. Fucking A. Okay. I mean, that is what they're saying, right? I don't know if he could run for president. I don't know if that's the best use of his um, talents. You can stack your machines two next to each other. Um, I don't think I have big enough power poles for it yet. Or maybe I do. I don't care. Oh, fuck, actually. You, can you think of anyone who you think would 100% win if they ran? So probably some actor or actress. Um, I, no, I don't think... Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks. No, I don't think it works that way. He, who hates Tom Hanks? It's, I just don't think it's enough to like get people to vote. I don't think it would work like that. What about if Obama could somehow run again? Do you think that would be... Isn't that like a weird conundrum? Like, what if Michelle Obama ran? Um, and what? Obama was the VP? You, you, no, Obama would be the first husband or first man or whatever. Um, yeah, I think... Wait, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, I know. It'd be if weird. If Michelle Obama ran, she would be the best candidate that the democrats have right now It'd better be like than a gavin, cheat code. gavin Newsom. like it you, would literally be a cheat code. <laughs> i don't know if you can do that well why not fucking bill clinton did it with hillary clinton yeah true they did try I, yeah i don't know it just seems like it would be against some kind of rule <laughs> wait a minute Let, let's let's think about this real quick well because like imagine that imagine obama then was like the first lady or first man or i don't know what they would call it yeah and then like, imagine afterwards oh my then, god then after the presidency imagine he gets divorced and marries another woman and then she runs <laughs> could he just do that forever wait a minute if michelle obama ran that would they would have to destroy right that would just it would fucking clean up no i don't know first black lady president plus obama's power star power yeah i don't know because you're getting obama as well obviously with michelle obama mm-hmm well, that would be like the whole point. Rage Pope, saying it's literally just Hillary is first off completely untrue. First off, Hillary Clinton was like universally not liked by a lot of fucking people, a lot. I don't think uh, Michelle Obama has that at all. Um, second of all, Bill Clinton wasn't that great of a president, to be honest, not compared to Obama. Like he was fine, but- Wait, what do you I, mean? I thought Bill Clinton was pretty well loved by most people. As far as accomplishments and getting things done, you thought he did more than Obama? Uh, I'm just saying in terms of popularity I thought, like everybody liked Bill Clinton Now they do I don't know I don't what was the approval rating when he was actually in office though? 
I don't know. I thought it, he did. Wasn't he presiding over like the dot com bubble? He didn't really off, do it, much. He ran even, like even that. Budget. Even if that was the case, we're talking about Hillary Clinton versus Michelle Obama. I think no, no. Two I think Michelle Obama people. would be way better. Yeah, but Hillary Clinton would be a bad idea. Yeah, super bad idea. She's universally disliked, and everyone fucking loves Michelle Obama. Um. Yeah. Maybe. Well, or at least she doesn't have the same baggage as fucking Hillary does or did. I hate some of your fucking viewers sometimes. You know what? <laughs> Catch me at TwitchCon, all of you, especially you, uh, fucking gay sheriff. I'll fucking see you there, mate. Come at me. Okay, these things will run indefinitely and burn coal no matter what, right? So these are a little scary because I can burn through a bunch of energy even when I'm not, even when I don't need to. Can we, are we big enough? Is the orbit of DDG big enough to have its own conference yet? I have no idea. Think about if you did your own conference, bro. Imagine how fucking sick that would be. Do you know how much fun that would be also? Can we do it? It could be a money-making opportunity. Oh, Steam is self-regulating? So you're just going to completely not respond to what I said? Um, what would the opportunity be? I mean, I was able I to bring know. out a lot of people for... Um, just for some bullshit that no one wants to do. Campaigning? Yuck. Yeah. But a, but imagine a fucking conference. Memes being revealed. It's like 13 out of 10 secrets going out there, but only to participants. It would be it would be huge. Hmm. Uh, you could have all of the DGG orbiters there as well. It's like, like, it would be like the Twitch politics conference. And you would be at the helm of it. Not streamable on Twitch. Too hot for Twitch. That would be... Interesting. We would just need like um You know everyone would show up if we did it. Big money making opportunity. Big. Huge. Are you thinking what I'm thinking here? What are you thinking, Dan? I'm thinking about dollar signs right now, okay? What are you gonna charge people tickets? Fucking A we are! What do you think this is free? The conference center costs fucking money. That our time is valuable. Hello? There's gonna be exclusive DGG hoodies that you get as a result of this? Like come on. Uh, God, I, I gotta be honest though, it would be pretty base to do it. Hmm. Imagine IRL viewer call-ins, where I would have to oh, muster God. up the nerve to some fucking guy who could, like a Knut's up there, like, talking about music, and I'm gonna tell him to go fuck himself. Oh, it would be amazing. IRL misspeaks? Yeah. That would be just, it, it would be really fun to do it. Um, we would just need to have like events or something planned. So it's, just, it's not just a bunch of people like awkwardly standing around. Oh yeah, because I know, did I like that impromptu DGG meetup in Austin. Um, and I think like- You remember also you did one in was, California just seeing how many people you could get for no reason at all. And you had like 30 people. I actually have a lot of people showing up. When I was in Stockholm, I think we announced one a couple hours early. And I think I had like a hundred people show up to that Starbucks in fucking Sweden. And then down in Austin, when we did the one with Lewis Rossman, I think I had like around 50, 60 people show up. Uh, I want you to imagine that we actually did this. First off, we could get some cool events. It could be a multi-day event. And I'll tell you this as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this. A lot of publications, a good example of this used to be TechCrunch. I don't think it's the case anymore. But oh, I just did an interview with the guy over there, yeah. So at TechCrunch, um, used to be like, it probably still is, the biggest tech blog. Mm -hmm. And before it got bought out by, I think it was Verizon and then someone before it. But before that, do you know where they got almost all of their revenue from? This um, once a year conference that they did. That oh. was where all the revenue came from, from doing that, from selling the tickets, from selling the things at the show, all that, that like, it was like a huge fucking event for them to do. And then all the ads they made out of the year, everything else, that was like, it wasn't the case. Like, I'm telling you, if we did an actual decent conference, got a bunch of people to do it, have a bunch of like, IR, you know, content for three days, like this would actually be thing, uh, something that'd be really cool to do. I think it's at least worth um, thinking it's about. worth investigating both on the fun perspective, but also on the money perspective. Yeah, I'd have to think about it. I feel like put on a good conference, get a good area, get everything lined up. Probably anywhere from, depending on how big you're gonna go, like ten to $50,000 maybe? Yeah, I, I think that's like a fair amount. Like maybe, maybe, honestly, even go a little higher because <sighs> you're talking about renting out some place for a few days. But let's say all in, worst case scenario, like 100K to do it. I genuinely feel like you could probably, I mean, the question is how many- 100K is a lot. 
No, I'd I'm, I'm, saying, like, I'm saying worst case scenario because oh, sure. let's say we're comping travel for some people to come there as well. Like you might want to have some guests, you know, random stars of the show, meet the past, all that type of stuff, right? But like, um, the question is, how much do you sell tickets for, and how many people do we reasonably think that we could get? You can't sell it for a fuck ton because people are going to come in there. You know, they're they're probably a lot of people are going to be flying in and paying for a hotel for a you few. You probably days. have like different levels of tickets, right? Yeah, for sure you can, and I, I assume that you would also have some like. You know, there's no reason that you can't do your own debates. Like, you go to these fucking garbage fucking, you know... No, no, I understand I could. One is to learn, so I can see, like, what works and what doesn't. And I have learned a lot about how to put these on, if I do want to put them on. Um, and then the second thing is just, like, the organization for it all is hard. I've got a guy that is setting the Change My Mind stuff up. Hopefully within two months I'll be doing um, uh, two or three of those across some college campuses. That'll be interesting to get feedback on that. Um, I know I could do my own live debate stuff. I would just have to set it up. Um, I'd like it just be more management stuff, but I'd rather work on this media stuff instead. But I, I think important though, is that this doesn't become, it should not be a DGG conference. That's too cliche. It's too tied in. It needs to, it can feel like that in practice and be that in practice, but I think it needs to be important enough that we can expect everyone of the who's who in Twitch politics to kind of be at this type of thing. I think that's what you're going okay, for. So that you have maybe I think we need one quick thing and I could be wrong and I don't want to sound mean or anything. Uh, but I think that the one thing kind of came to pass, I, or something came to my mind. We start looking up numbers. I think Twitch politics kind of died. I think it's. I think after. Well, it's I, not about that, right? If you think about all the people in the scene and all the viewers that they have, these are all people that would want to come to a conference. Like, like. No, yeah, I understand. Like, TwitchCon, I can pull yeah. some people, but like, I think the Twitch politics scene. Like, I don't know how many people are even left there. I think it's pretty dead. Well, okay. Forget even Twitch politics. Let's just talk politics in general. Like, you would have Lauren Southern there. You would have. Fuentes there. He would have, you know, I don't know, whoever else, like these big players. Maybe you could get fucking um, Jesse Lee Peterson to be there. Like, this would be fucking crazy if we could get oh, sure, all sure. these people there, right? That would be so... It would be like actual... Funny memes. There yeah. is... Well, there is no really big event that caters to this type of, type of stuff right now. Like, what what what's the biggest competitor as far as an event like this? For live events, right it's now? all the ones that I've been going to, yeah. Because everything and else is pretty You could do insular. a better job. Um, I think so. I think and I you're also the thing. biggest draw of any of these people, and you're going to their shows when they should be coming to your fucking Well, no, show. I've been at some of these shows I've been at. There have been people that have bigger draws than me. Like at the New York City Minds event, Tim Poole was there. He definitely has a bigger draw than me. James O'Keefe from Project Veritas was there. He definitely has a bigger draw than me. There are a few, there are a few bigger people. Sure, sure, I'm not saying mm -hmm. they don't, like obviously Shapiro and Tim Poole. Yeah, they're bigger deals than you. And can we expect them to come to this? Maybe. Do they go to smaller events ever, or do they only go to their own events? I think they I don't think many of these people go to many other things, but I don't know. Okay, so that so that's fine. But mm -hmm. you're still in that class of I think you're in that class of uh yeah, size. Like you're not man. Tim Pool, but you're Treasure. a fucking big dick swinging around here compared yeah, to compared to a Jesse Lee Peterson? Mm -hmm. Fucking you, A. Give me one second, I'll be back. Hold on one second. Yeah, sure. Now we're probably I still think you're looking at a hundred K. Probably maxed out, but fifty to hundred k cost to do. That's all so this type expensive. Of stuff. What are you? What are we doing at this thing? Well, it costs money to rent out a big space. My guess, you know? without knowing, my guess is to rent out like a decent sized conference area. Can't be more than five thousand dollars for two days, or maybe around there. Unless we're talking okay. about doing it like in downtown LA or some shit. Someone was saying doing it in Vegas, which does make a little bit of sense because that is a kind of sounds expensive. Place. How about like Chicago? <laughs> Yeah, how about fucking uh, Detroit? <laughs> Fuck no, it. Hey, Detroit is a nice place. Not all of Detroit I'm, is a I, fucking okay, shit. The reason okay? that, that Las Vegas is a place to do it is I do believe that kind of the flights are artificially cheap going to Las Vegas, unironically. Um, so you do a conference in Las Vegas, and um, I think you're looking at more. I mean, it depends how many people you're expecting to show up. So what, give me the best case scenario for how many people you think you could get to show up to this. And let's say you got a few banger people like JLP okay. and everyone else. Best case scenario would be best case. 500 to 1,000. That'd be best case. I feel like that's grossly underselling how many people you You think you I can get. get more than 1,000 people to show up for a conference? I do. Actually, if I got 150 in Omaha for fucking door knocking, maybe. I'm not sure. Because it would be like a legendary in-person event with like... How many people go to like fucking VidCon or whatever? Unbelievable events. I just have no idea. Is that like 100,000 or like 5,000 or... To VidCon? Yeah, um, no let, me, let me see if there's any attendance things. Let's see. 75,000 people in 2019. Mm 
Well. But let's assume, I would hope you could get like 2,000 people. Damn. But again, this is like, oh, on the idea that you could get, um, you know, some, you get Pac-Man there, mm -hmm. you get fucking JLP there, um, you know. I have to, um, Doobie is here and he wants to talk, shut fuck. Give me like one hour and I'll be right back, okay? I need to talk, I'm gonna to talk to some dude. Who's this, the fucking anime profile picture dude? No, he's the guy that, the um, I think this is one of the main sponsors that Mines event in New York. Apparently he wants to talk and he sponsors the Mines platform or he might own it. He might be an owner of the Mines platform, I don't know. But he wants to argue about truth or something, I'm not sure. I'll be back in like an hour, okay? Maybe less. What? Dad doesn't even say goodbye, what a fucking loser.